In the last video, we projected depreciation and set the stage for a comprehensive cash flow analysis. Now it's the time to tackle working capital, a crucial piece that impacts cash flow in real life. As I learned at JP Morgan, working capital can make or break a company's liquidity and I'll show you exactly how to get it right. Hello friends, welcome back to Wall Street Mojo's step-by-step -step tutorial on financial modeling in Excel. So this is step number six. Today we are going to talk about projecting the working capital. So if you have directly come to this video tutorial, I would encourage you to follow these steps in this sequence. We already discussed, you know, how we are going to go about creating a financial model in step number one. And we discussed about the structure. Then we analyzed the financial statements. Then we projected the revenues thereafter the cost and then in the previous video we discussed how to go about projecting depreciation and the capital expenditure now we are at step number six that is projecting the working capital so for that i'll again go back to this um, template here which we were already working on and uh, if you look at the index we have this working capital tab here right now let us understand what working capital means in the context of financial modeling. So typically when we talk about working capital, we say that working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. Like for example, if you go back to the balance sheet here, here we have the current assets and then we have the current liabilities. So basically working capital in traditional sense is designed as current assets minus current liabilities but here what we are doing is we are talking about working capital core items like account receivables inventory and accounts payable so these are the three things we are looking at account receivables inventory and accounts payables right so when it comes to forecast we will not be forecasting cash and cash equivalents here cash and cash equivalents will come separately in the cash flow statement okay now let's go back to this working capital sheet and um, Let's first understand, you know, what these terms actually mean. Account receivables. Now think of it like money that is owed to the company by the customers for the goods or uh, services that they have delivered on credit. So if uh, a client is purchasing on credit, then that amount will go as accounts receivable. All right. Now the second thing which we have is the inventory. So this is nothing but, you know, goods and materials a company actually holds. Uh, for production or sale so these are like raw material which you have purchased from the suppliers or um, anything that you are holding currently for production or sale are classified as inventory so inventory can be a raw material inventory it could be work in progress inventory or it could be finished goods inventory as well right so that's about the inventory part and finally we have the accounts payables now accounts payable is basically the money that the company actually owes to the suppliers so Let's say you're buying raw material from suppliers. So um, you may not pay everything in cash. You would like to have some credit from suppliers, right? So that amount will actually go as accounts payables. Now, these are the three items which are considered when we talk about working capital forecast. Now, let us look at how we can go about projecting these three. The answer actually lies in this thing called as cash collection cycle or cash conversion cycle. Now, I would like you to think from the point of view of a company, right? First, the company makes an investment. So the investment via working capital would be in the form of inventory, right? So the company will purchase raw material and it will take some days to process the raw material and convert it into finished goods, right? So let's say it takes 30 days. So company has made an investment and it is taking 30 days for that company to, let's say, process the inventory and complete the overall process of making it as a final product right now let's say the selling process has been now completed and the client has bought this product on credit okay so a credit period could be 15 days 30 days whatever let me just put this number randomly as 15 days so what's happening is that when you're making an investment in the inventory inventory getting converted into WIP work in progress inventory and then finished goods and then the selling process happens and finally when you receive cash it is still 45 days right 30 days and 15 days 45 days so your cash is stuck in the system for 45 days right now 
what is this payment period here now payment period is basically uh, think of it like the accounts payables right when uh, you're purchasing inventory from uh, the suppliers again suppliers will or may demand cash up front but in most cases you will get a credit period also associated from them so you will have that leeway of paying them after 15 days or 30 days or 45 days right so let's assume that they give you a credit of 15 days okay or maybe i'll just change that number maybe 20 days now what happens is that when it comes to these first two items first two numbers right your cash is stuck as a company right for 45 days now the cash conversion cycle formula will now become as 15 days plus 30 days minus 20 days we are deducting payments period because someone else's cash is stuck here right so here it comes out to be 25 days now the idea here or visualize this 25 days as you know when you make an investment in your company via inventory and it takes 25 full days to come back to the system so that's what cash conversion cycle will actually mean to you now how is this related to working capital and how can you go about you know projecting working capital items like receivables inventory and payables using this now it's very simple actually so when it comes to receivables collection period as 15 you know you need to think about it from the turnovers point of view see here i have written receivables turnover okay now a receivables turnover formula is sales divided by accounts receivables okay now what does this actually mean is that uh, how many times during the year you are converting your receivables into cash okay so let's say you're taking 15 days to do that so if you have to actually calculate receivables turnover what will that be so that will be equal to nothing but your 365 days right so if you have 365 days in a year divided by 15 so that's the number of times you're converting receivables into cash so that's fair enough right because every 15 days you're doing that so in a year you're doing that 24 point three times right now the same we can do for the inventory turnover as well and the payables turnover the formulas are as like this like this is cogs divided by inventory and for payables turnover it is cogs divided by payables or accounts payables okay so let's calculate that as well in this case so here it will come out to be 365 that is uh, this link here 365 divided by 30 days right so here it comes out to be 12.2 times so you're converting your inventory into final product and uh, you know so that it can be sold you're doing it 12.2 times during a year likewise let's calculate the payables turnover payables turnover is 365 divided by again 20 and you're doing this payment to the suppliers 18.3 times during the year so i hope you understood the logic here and from this you can actually calculate the receivables inventory and payable so let's now get started by putting in actual numbers right and uh, you will understand you know how to go about it so first thing first is that for actuals one let's calculate the receivables turnover what is the receivables turnover receivables turnover is sales divided by accounts receivables okay but in order to calculate that we'll need these numbers here right so let's get started by doing the basic work of linking the historical numbers so account receivables will come from the balance sheet right so here it is 1440 so here for the next three years likewise let's link the inventory numbers this is 3100 for actuals one so this is inventory and let's now link the payables number as well so here we have this payables as 2200 so we have linked the uh, working capital numbers now let's link the sales and the operating costs right so we need these numbers to calculate the turnovers right so let's do that too here we have sales total revenue this is 25500 for actuals one so i know the sales figures for all the years so I'm linking it across all the projected years as well okay let's now do the same for the operating costs 
operating cost is how much? 12500 here. So linking it across all the years. Okay. Now let's find out receivables turnover. Now receivables turnover is what? Sales that is total revenues divided by your accounts receivables. Okay. So this comes out to be 17.7 in this case. Okay. Let's now calculate the inventory turnover. Inventory turnover is cost of goods sold divided by inventory. Cost of goods sold is nothing but operating cost in the fix solution. So this is 25000 divided by your inventory that is 3100. Okay. So this is four times, right? And what about payables turnover? Again, it is operating cost that is COGS divided by accounts payables. Okay. So here it comes out to be 5.7. Okay, so interpretation wise, we understand what the turnover ratios are all about, right? Now let's find out the receivables collection period for year one. Okay, so how much will that be? Now uh, think in the opposite direction, you know, when we had the collection period, we calculated the receivables turnover. Now when we have the turnover, can we calculate the collections period? So receivables turnover essentially means that you're converting your receivables into cash 17.7 times during a year. How many days are there during a year? This is 365 days. So in order to calculate receivables collection period, this will be 365 divided by receivables turnover, right? So this is the formula that I'm going to use. It will be 365 divided by 17.7 so this comes out to be 20.6 days how about inventory processing days the formula will remain the same i mean similar this will be 365 divided by inventory turnover okay and payments period will be equal to 365 divided by payables turnover okay so let's now calculate uh, the processing days and the payments period so here this will be equal to let's link it 365 divided by how much divided by 4 here so it comes out to be 90.5 days and the payments period will be equal to again 365 divided by 5.7 so it comes out to be 64.2 so let's now also calculate the cash collection cycle so this will be equal to 20.6 plus 90.5 minus 64.2 we discussed you know it has to be a minus sign right so all in all we are getting this number as 46.7 days for the first year that is actual one so now what I'll do is uh, I'll actually you know make all of these numbers here as constant this link CL 16 is uh, linking directly to 365 right so what I want to do is I want to freeze this cell so that when I copy and paste it from row number column number C to column number D, this 365 days should not move. So I'm freezing this and making it as an absolute reference. Okay, so putting dollar signs in front of L and front of 16. Right. Let me do that for this one as well, and finally for the payments period as well. So now let's copy this and paste it for the other years as well. And what do we see here? we see that uh, you know the links are working perfectly fine right the cash collection cycle is kind of decreasing from 46.9 days to 44.9 days and then 42.1 uh, days now having understood this cash collection cycle now we'll go back to the case study and we'll see you know if there is any inputs which are given here regarding the same so when we look at the working capital management thing here we have been provided with these three details receivables collection period inventory processing period and the payments period right so let's uh, read this we have been provided that the receivables collection period will be around 19 days right so here they have provided us with this detail likewise when it comes to inventory processing days it's expected to be around 70 days and the payments period is expected to be around 48 days so these are basically our assumptions that we are going to use for the future years 19 70 and 48 so let me put these assumptions here 19 
70 and 48 okay so let's see what's the cash conversion cycle in this case it comes out to be 41 days all right so i'll just copy and paste this assumption for the other years as well all right so now what we have done is that we have found out what the cash collection cycle will be for the future now i would like you to think about it that if we want to figure out the account receivables number how can we do that the first thing will be that first find out the turnover ratios individually right can we do that yes we can do that because we already have the collection period processing days and the payments days right so we can calculate it using this formula right 365 is the number of days divided by 19 right so let me put the formula here 365 days divided by 19 so 19.2 is the receivables turnover ratio so why i have done that now the formula is reverse of what we have done so we know that receivables collection period is 19 days so in a year how many times are you going to convert the receivables into cash so i have simply divided 365 by 19 right so this will give me number of times it has happened and that's nothing but your receivables turnover ratio okay likewise let me do the same for inventory so this will be again 365 divided by 70 and in the third case it will be again 365 right divided by 48 okay so we get this as inventory turnovers and the payables turnovers okay so i'll just copy and paste it across for the other years as well and we have the turnover ratio that is the receivables inventory and payables now think about it what's the formula of receivables turnover it is sales divided by accounts receivables right we already know sales numbers right this is 45994 we also know what's the receivables turnover ratio receivables turnover ratio is equal to sales divided by account receivables so can i find the missing number that is accounts receivables here because i want to find account receivables what will i need to do i'll just copy this formula from here to here and uh, show you that if i have to calculate account receivables i just need to take account receivables here on the left hand side right and this will become equal to what it will become equal to sales divided by your receivables turnover right so the formula will be just you know the opposite of what we did okay so using this reverse logic we can find account receivables so let's do that here this will be equal to sales divided by account receivables and that will give us the account receivables actual number okay similarly when it comes to inventory we'll have it the same way it will be equal to cost of goods sold divided by your inventory turnover okay and coming to accounts payables this will be again equal to cost of goods sold divided by payables turnover so with this we get the receivables numbers inventory numbers and the payables numbers for the first year and i can just simply copy this and paste it for the other years to get the final number for all five year period right so this is how you can actually go about projecting the working capital items within your financial model okay so this basically completes our uh, step number six that is projecting the working capital